Okay, now let's discuss checkmating the Black King with basically two rooks. So the concept is the same. We're going to limit the squares the king can move to. We're going to keep reducing the, sort of this box where the king can move to, driving him to a, the side of the board, and then we're going to deliver checkmate. In this case, we really don't need the help of the king, but there are a few special things that we need to note because the, the rooks may actually become uh, vulnerable to, to capture, or the king might be able to capture the rooks, so we may have to do a few moves so the king, the black king, doesn't capture the rooks. But we're going to do start out by limiting the squares the black king can go to. So just like in the last lecture, I'm just going to go through these moves. So first I'm just going to move this, this rook up. I could actually chose the other rook. But here I've moved my rook to uh, g3. And notice with the green arrows, I've now limited uh, the space where the king can move to. And notice now the king cannot move to any one of these squares highlighted in red. Okay. So what the king's going to want to do is going to want to try to run over to where the rooks are, can, so can maybe try to capture the rooks. Okay, so the so the black king's going to run to e4. Okay, but um, we can still make the box smaller because the king can't capture the rooks yet. So it's going to come up and notice what I've done is I've drawn, I moved this rook to h4, the one that was on h1 up to h4. And notice I've drawn in green arrows the, the all the squares that the that the rooks control, or maybe we say where the rooks could capture the enemy king. And since the king can't be on any, any of those squares by rule, it has to move. It can't move to those squares. So notice it can't move to any of the squares highlighted in red. So notice how we've made the box a little bit smaller, one sort of one row at a time. But once again, the king's going to run towards the rooks because it's going to try to capture the rooks. So it's going to run to f5. Now if we were to move, now if we were just continue the pattern of sort of alternating the rooks down, um, the, the, a rook would get captured. So if we were to move this rook on g3 to g5, the king could simply just capture the rook. So what we want to do is we want, we're going to basically switch the sides of the rooks. So when the king gets over to the rooks, we're just going to move the rooks over to the other side because it's going to take the king a few moves to get over to that side. And during that time, we can be moving the king back. This is how it works. So you move the king back a few rows. The king gets over to the rooks and you have to move the rooks over and then you move them back a few rows. So we're just going to move this rook on f4 over. Notice I could have probably moved the rook on uh, g3 over. It doesn't really matter. So, um, but I'm going to move the rook on uh, h4 over just because it will keep the box a little bit smaller. If I move this one over, the king can actually move over and it'll make the box a little bit bigger. But I'm going to keep the box the same size, so I'm going to move this rook over. And now notice the king cannot, it's, um, it's still within the same size box. And the king cannot move to any of these squares in red. And these are the squares where the rooks could capture if the king went to. So we didn't make the box any smaller, but what we're doing is we're getting the rooks to the point to where we can actually uh, make this box smaller and drive the king towards the edge of the board. Now, of course, the king noticing it's not going to be able to come over and capture any rooks on this side anymore. Now it's going to have to run back to the other side. So it's going to now start running towards the other side. Now we'll just um, we'll sort of get a maybe not a freebie, but we can move this rook on g3 down and make it move back a little bit more. So notice I move the rook down. I can make, I'm making the box smaller. The king is now forced to go back towards the edge of the board. Okay, because it can't move, you know, it can't stay on the same, the same row and it can't move down because this rook on a4 would capture it. 
and it can't stay on this fifth row or else this rook on g5 would capture it so it has to move back it's going to move back towards f6 of course threatening the capture of the rook so now the rook just moves all the way over to the other side of the board okay way out of the way of the king and now look these are all the squares where the rook the rooks could capture the king and the king cannot move to any of these squares of course it doesn't want to move back so it's going to move to the side it's going to run towards the rooks again once again now we have this pattern where the where the rooks will just sort of maybe seesaw back and forth or climb a ladder whatever you want to think of how you want to think about it so the rook comes up again notice the squares the rooks could capture the king on and the king cannot move to any of the squares in red so it's actually forced back towards the side of the board but of course it's once again going to run towards the rooks not able to get in another rook move moving it back once again it is forced back towards the side of the board oh, or else because the rooks control or would capture it if it moved anywhere else except for these three squares up here so the king has to run to one of these three squares of course it's going to move to this one because it wants to capture the rook so now I'm just going to swing my rooks over one more time all the way over okay I'm probably going to move the rook a little bit closer just to make the box smaller but it does, at this point it doesn't matter the king will not have time to run over to the other side of the board and to capture the rooks so now the king is sort of stuck okay and now the king is actually going to run it doesn't want to run to d8 because it's that'd be checkmate in one we'd actually just move this rook on a6 down and be checkmate it actually has to come over to to uh, b8 to save checkmate notice that so like before if the rook if it moved the other way the rook would just move here and it'd be checkmate so now this rook is just going to move all the way over okay once again the king is trapped on this side of the board now and it can't move to any of these red squares it can't get out it's now trapped along the back here king's just going to move over one and then we're going to deliver checkmate all the way down and notice this is checkmate because it has the king has nowhere to move because the rooks can capture anywhere along here so anywhere where the king moves now it is checkmate i should probably highlight it